When Play Cable comes to your house, Cable comes alive with the world's most sophisticated computer game library. Without paying too much. I struck you out! The fun can't start for your family till you call your cable company, so do it. Only a millionaire would want to play any other way. Tails, call your cable operator. Take it from Mickey. Play Cable's a hit. Play Cable, the all-game channel. Released several months ago, the last episode of Wonders of the Retro Gaming World was about the Sega channel. The video is linked below in the description, but the abridged version is that it was a system that allowed full games to be downloaded digitally to the Sega Genesis using cable television networks. I thought this was amazing technology for its release in 1994, but several viewers pointed out that this technology actually goes all the way back to 1981. I was initially amazed that a basic precursor to gaming streaming services such as PlayStation Now existed in the mid 90s, but the fact that there was a play cable for Mattel's and television in 1981 absolutely makes it a wonder of the retro gaming world. The story of Play Cable actually goes back to 1979, however, before the Intellivision was even widely released. The Play Cable company was formed as a joint venture between Mattel and General Instrument. This was headed up by Jim Weisenberg and Gary Smith, and they tested Play Cable in several American cities until its formal launch in 1981. Several variants are known to exist. One was the Gerald model, while another is just branded by General Instrument. As far as I can tell they are completely identical, although Gerald refers to General Instrument's Gerald division which also supplied cable TV converters. My guess is that it was just a regional thing, but if you know the real reason why there are two variants, then please feel free to let me know. Setting up the play cable seemed to be an easy task, as the module simply plugged into the side of your favourite Intellivision and into its own power adapter. That was then cabled to a coax switch box, which was then either plugged into your cable converter box or directly into your TV depending on your awesome wood grain 1980s setup. Or at least I hope it was wood grain, or you were doing it wrong. This was then tuned to a free channel, and from there the fun could begin. The interface was a simple menu where the games could be selected, but since it wasn't the internet, as that was not yet invented in its modern form, the channel continuously brought cast the game's data in a loop, very much like for the Sega channel. Since it may not have been looping through the data of that particular game you wanted as you selected it however, then there may have been a delay. But even then, this was supposedly only 10 seconds, which I'm sure was a small price to pay to be a part of the future. This data was downloaded to the 4 kilobytes of memory available on the play cable, but of course, all data was lost once the play cable was switched off, meaning that another 10 seconds would have to be waited through the next time it was used. Aside from the cost to have cable television, the Play Cable ran at a monthly fee of $12. Initially, users had access to 15 different games, which rotated monthly. However, this was up to 20 games per month, further along the line. The advertising campaign featured none other than former baseball professional, Mickey Mantle. This made sense since a lot of the Intellivision games were sports-based, and even though the Play Cable had relatively small market penetration, which I'll discuss in a minute, the adverts at least seemed to be plentiful and successful. A spanner was thrown into the works in 1982, however, when a couple of dudes from New Jersey contacted Mattel. Joe Jacobs and Dennis Clark had hooked their play cable adapter up to a personal computer, reverse engineered it to be a development system of sorts by decoding the EXEC data. They started coding their own games for the Intellivision and offered their services to Mattel before threatening to go to a rival company. Now, of course this sort of thing in the present would get you sued into high heaven, but it was a different time back then. Instead, to appease Joe and Dennis, they were contracted to code the Intellivision port of the arc arcade car game, Bump and Jump. They were paid $24,000 for their troubles, although they were never credited thanks to Mattel's policy at the time since they were both contractors. This may have kicked off the beginning of the end for Play Cable, however, as Mattel's management were nervous that smaller companies might use it as a development kit as well and start producing unofficial and television games. That wasn't its biggest problem though. Two years after launch, the Play Cable was only offered on 15 cable systems nationwide and reportedly only had 10,000 subscribers at its peak. An increase of 20 games per month from 15 sadly didn't help much either. Additionally, the Play Cable only had enough memory for 4K games, so all of the newer 8K titles were sadly not supported. It seems the cable operators were getting a bit cagey too, as at the time a large amount of bandwidth was required for the games, which wasn't being utilised by a very large audience. Assuming the impact the crash of the early 80s would have been having on Mattel at the time as well, it's no surprise that it was decided in 1983 to discontinue the service. Dad, it's here! When play cable comes to your house, cable comes alive. It's the world's most sophisticated computer game library at your fingertips 24 hours a day on cable TV. It's Play Cable, the all 
The Intellivision itself was discontinued in 1984, and although Mattel hasn't really been involved in the video game hardware business since the 80s unless you count the Hyperscan, which I really hope you don't, it's still around as a remarkably successful toy company. However, the same can't be said for General Instrument unfortunately, as it went defunct in 1997 after being taken over by Next Level Systems, which in turn was acquired by Motorola in the January of 2000. Ultimately, all play cable adapters were required to be returned once the system was discontinued, meaning that only a few exist in the wild today. The last reported adapter to show up on eBay was in the February of 2016, which sold for over $1,100. This is purely for collection purposes, however, since even a working unit will only show the default play cable screen if plugged in. The service hasn't been active since 1983 after all. Unlike the Sega Channel and Nintendo Satella View, all games released on the play cable could also be bought in physical form. There were no games lost to the sands of times after the service was switched off luckily, as were the case with the before mentioned. It's still important to remember and respect the play cable for what it was however, even though it didn't make a huge splash in the gaming industry at the time, it was the very first piece of consumer electronics that allowed games to be broadcasted and played without a physical cartridge on demand. It was no PlayStation now, hell, it wasn't even anything compared to the Sega channel that came 15 years later, but it's an important piece of gaming history nonetheless. Hello Retro Gamers, and thank you for watching the first episode of Wonders of the Retro Gaming World for 2017. If this type of thing interests you, then this is the fourth installment in the series. Other videos are based on the Sega Channel and the Satella View, which I both referred to in this video, and there is an additional episode about the Net Eurozy, which was a PS1 development kit released to the general public. Looking aside Retro Game On, I've also written my second article for GameCloud in which I visited a local event called Play Up Perth. This showcases local indie games, but this particular night was a special event as all games were from the local Global Game Jam that was a few weekends ago. On top of everything else, it was held in a retro gaming museum, so it was more or less paradise for me. Anyway, that's the link below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.